Look out for a new wave of COVID-19 cases in the coming days and weeks. There's a message today from Finance Minister Lawrence Wong, who is also the co-chair of Singapore's COVID-19 Task Force. In a social media post, he says it is inevitable that Omicron will spread in our community as it has in countries everywhere. We must expect a new wave of cases in the coming days and weeks. This comes as protocols are being adjusted to manage the Omicron cases in the same way as for Delta. And so from today, Omicron cases will be allowed to recover under the Home Recovery Programme or be managed at community care facilities and hospitals instead of being isolated at dedicated facilities. The Health Ministry says those who are unwell will be processed based on both their clinical presentation and underlying risk factors. Those who are well but test positive for Omicron will continue to self-test and self-manage. And their close contacts will be issued a seven-day health risk warning where they will be required to self-test with ART daily before leaving their homes. The Manpower Ministry says around 52,000 employees in Singapore have not taken any COVID-19 vaccine. Of them, about 6,700 are 60 years old and above and are at a very high risk of severe illness or death from COVID-19 infection. MOM also notes that 98% of the workforce, excluding self-employed persons, have been inoculated. Now, these updates follow the Health Ministry's announcement last night that unvaccinated workers will not be allowed to return to the workplace from January 15th next year. This even if they test negative for COVID-19 24 hours beforehand. Partially vaccinated workers will be given a grace period until January 31st next year to complete their vaccination regime. Meanwhile, vaccination will be a mandatory condition for the approval of new applications for work passes, long-term passes and permanent residence in Singapore from February 1st next year. Those renewing their work passes will also have to be vaccinated. But this will not apply to children below 12 years old and those who are medically ineligible for vaccination. Professor Dale Fisher is here. He's a senior consultant at NUH's Division of Infectious Diseases. Welcome to the show, Professor. Professor, what do you make of the move to allow Omicron cases to recover at home or at community care facilities or instead of being isolated at dedicated facilities? What does it signal to you about what we now know about this new variant? Thanks, Harry Anto. Uh, yeah, there has been a, a pause, obviously. Uh, you remember that our, our strategy, which began back in August and through September, was the cautious stepwise exit from the pandemic. Now, this was sort of progressing slowly, but, uh, but then South Africa reported this, uh, this new variant, the Omicron, on November 26th. So we, we're literally a month ago since that was, was reported, and, and obviously we knew about it, but we had to... Uh, wait for the science to catch up, if you like. Um, and in fact, our leaders had to, to make decisions even without having the science at hand. The, the early science was that there was increased transmissibility uh, and possibly re reinfections suggesting escape from immunity. But uh, that was based on young people, a lot of university students, and we know the severity is different. So we had to wait for, for more information to see if it was actually worse worse than Delta or the same, or, or, or ideally even, even less severe. So in, uh, in Singapore, it was actually a little bit easier because of our stepwise uh, exit from the pandemic. Uh, we haven't actually removed all our restrictions, obviously, um, with, uh, with masks and, and things like that, which have, have had to be reintroduced in, in Europe. Uh, our biggest uh, change, I guess, was in testing of travellers uh, decreasing the vaccinated travel lanes uh, in an attempt to contain Omicron. But it's obviously different when you're treating two viruses differently, when you've got, uh, you've got, uh, you're easing Delta restrictions, but you're, you're tightening up on Omicron restrictions. So this is, this is not sustainable. So, so what we've got now is increasing evidence that severity is not greater. 
So, so this means that we can align the two approaches and stop worrying whether it's Delta or Omicron and just get back to the business of the stepwise exit from the pandemic. Professor, the Health Ministry says to expect more community cases and rapid doubling of infections in the coming days and weeks. Will that lead to Singapore having to <clears throat> tighten measures uh, like what is happening in the Western countries right now? Rightly so, as you mentioned, in Europe where you know, they have to reintroduce mask wearing. So there, there's little doubt that Omicron will replace Delta. We've seen some, uh, some incredible uh, changes in the numbers uh, overseas. Uh, but if it really is milder, then it's a good outcome, really. You couldn't have designed it better that you've got a more transmissible virus that will replace uh, Delta. And if it turns out to be milder, or at least not as bad, then, then this is uh, quite a good thing. And in the US, it, took, it only took like three or four weeks for, for Omicron to go from zero cases up to being over 70% of all their cases. So... <clears throat> As, uh, as has been the case since August when, when we began the transition, we really only need to, to tighten the measures if, if hospitals are under threat. Uh, and they're certainly not under threat at the moment. 98.7% of our cases are asymptomatic or mild. And today we've only got 26 COVID positive cases in ICU. And I must say 50, 15 of those cases, uh, still a majority, are, are in the unvaccinated. So. So about a month ago, we had 140 cases in ICU, but now, now the, the, the ICUs are only using about 50% of their capacity. So, so Singapore's strategy, which has been patience uh, as you exit the pandemic, as opposed to other countries which have done, done this sort of Freedom Day approach, uh, I, I think it's allowed us to be more resilient through these unknowns evolving through these changes. Uh, when you remove all the restrictions, <clears throat> pardon me, you've got the challenge of having to, to manage public sentiment, which is uh, all the reversals, the yo-yoing around, uh, reversing decisions, reintroducing restrictions. This is very challenging. And in Singapore, this was, uh, was less of a challenge. So, Professor, from what we know so far now that the Omicron variant is more transmissible than the Delta variant, and it's already here on our shores, is it on its way to becoming the dominant strain in Singapore like in other countries? You know, and if so, if it's more transmissible, what is the worst case scenario? Or are there any positives to Omicron replacing Delta as the main variant? Yeah, so I alluded to the, this earlier that it's a, it's a lovely outcome if you actually end up with something more transmissible to replace Delta and actually be milder. Uh, school's still a little bit out on whether it's milder because you have to apply it to different populations and the vaccination status and past infection status. But, uh, but really, there's no sensing that it's more severe and that, that's the most important thing at the moment. Um, and also the other thing that's most important is that it's not escaping the immunity, whether it's immunity through vaccination or through past infection. Uh, it's, it's not escaping that in terms of severe disease. Like Delta, we know it's escaping that and not stopping the mild and asymptomatic disease. But, but as long as the, the vaccine and, and past infection prote protects against severe disease, that's the most important thing. So I think we can be confident with the, the current uh, early status of the science regarding Omicron, I think. Uh, I don't actually think, you asked about the worst scenario, I don't actually think that the, the worst case scenario exists with, with Omicron. Um, I think most likely we can revert to the uh, existing plan with the circulating virus and, and sort of amalgamate the two approaches and, and living with, with COVID and having confidence that the vaccine is being protective. I think actually the worst case scenario still lies in, in a possible future variant. We've spoken about disease X uh, many times before. This, this still worries me. Um, not a lot, I'm not losing sleep over it, but, but I think that that is the worst scenario is that if you get a variant that actually escapes uh, the protection provided by the vaccine, uh, we know that people unvaccinated uh, are still getting very ill. Uh, if suddenly the vaccine didn't work because of the mutations in a new variant, then we would be somewhat back at the start trying to create a new vaccine, vaccinate the whole community again, 
Um, and this is why we need to keep on top of the evolving genetics uh, and understanding how any new variant, which, which will occur, how it affects us. Um, so I hope we can work out how to be resilient to the new variants and not shutting the borders every time we, uh, we have a new one. We have to get more resilient in a way more smarter than, than that because the, the social and economic impacts of, of closing borders are, are not small, as you know, Harry Anto. Professor, thank you so much for your insights. Professor Dale Fisher, Senior Infectious Diseases Consultant at NUH.